The outlines of a huge metropolis appeared ahead, and passengers breathed a sigh of relief wanting to get out as soon as possible, to stretch and breathe the fresh air. Among the passengers, in a far compartment sat a girl, for who moving to New York was an important and significant event. The stranger's name was Diana Collins. She grew up in one of the Iowa farms, and since childhood, dreamed of the lights of the big city. But Diana's dream came true only when she became an adult. She was raised by her mother, who worked as a postman, and had no money to settle down with her daughter in the city. Parting with her mother at a train station, Diana did not even know that she was seeing the loved one for the last time. In two months, her mother was gone. Finally, the train stopped. Diana got out and looked around in confusion. Of course, no one met the girl, and she got little idea where to go next. Suddenly, someone insistently touched her hand, intended to attract attention. The girl turned around and saw a young taxi driver, who smiled ineffably said, Hello, I see you're not local. Let me help you. The city is big, you can get lost. Diana looked at the guy in embarrassment, and then, giving up on everything, snuggled down in the passenger seat. As it turned out, the taxi driver's name was Francis Bronson. On the way, the young people started talking as if they had known each other for many years. Francis, understanding the girl's state of mind, treated her with a degree of condescension and concern. Moreover, Diana would not be able to deal with everything alone, and therefore, the guy offered her to temporarily stay with him. Hearing about this, the girl could not contain her emotions, and almost burst into tears. She was so afraid of a huge metropolis in which everyone lived as he pleased, and did not care about his neighbor. Thank you, Francis, the young muttered in embarrassment. So, thanks for the help of unfamiliar person, the girl had a roof over her head, and hoped that everything in life would get better. Diana spent the rest of the evening, putting things away, and settling into Francis' small house. Finally, then she was done, and dusk was already gathering outside the window. The girl decided to go to bed. Falling asleep, she mentally thanked God for sending her such a good person, in a person of a young taxi driver. Francis didn't charge Diana for rent, but sometimes he asked her to cook dinner. So the young people lived for a month, while remaining only friends. All this time, the girl could not find a job in any way. But one day, Francis returns home earlier than usual, and with difficulty restraining his excitement, reported interesting news. Can you imagine? I found us a job. One of my regular clients gave me the address of the wealthy businessman, who needs a personal driver and a maid. What do you think about this? Do you agree to go as a maid? Of course, of course I do, Diana answered readily. The next day, the young people went to the specified address. They noticed the house they were looking for from afar. The two-story mansion stood out even against the background of other, no less respectable houses in the neighborhood. Soon, the owner of the house came out to them, who introduced himself as Jonathan Davis. In appearance, he was about 35 years old, and in his gaze, read the confidence and successful self-aware person. After giving Diana a dirty look from head to toe, he asked her and Francis a couple of questions, and then said that they had been hired. Not expecting that everything would turn out so simply, the young people happily smiled and went to get acquainted with the working conditions. Francis was to become the driver of a huge SUV, and Diana was to do the cleaning and help in the kitchen. The newly minted workers were offered to live in a servant's room, so in general, the working conditions turned out to be quite acceptable. And similar days went after days for Francis and Diana. In general, everything was fine, and only one circumstance confused the young workers. The thing was that Jonathan Davis singled out Diana among all the servants. Most often, this was expressed by the fact that the owner of the house gave her small gifts and showed signs of attention. It seemed strange to Francis, and deep down, he felt a sense of jealousy. Of course, he understood that he and Diana were just friends, but his heart refused to understand it flatly. The guy didn't know that it's true love, but he didn't doubt that he was attracted to Diana like a magnet. And the girl from the province, meanwhile, enjoyed the attention from the rich owner. Francis refused to believe it, considering the speculation of the servants as a simple gossip. Meanwhile, the romance between the maid and the owner was speeding up. 
Soon, it became clear to everyone around that the wedding was just around the corner. Francis at first terribly worried about it, and even limited his communications with Diane, but soon events occurred that threw the upcoming wedding into the background. The fact was that the Francis' father was in a hospital and could only count on his son's help. Now, the guy spent all his salary on the treatment of his father, to whom the doctors made a very disappointing diagnosis. Diana, after marrying Jonathan, changed a lot and stopped noticing Francis at all, considering him a servant, for whom it was not worth wasting your precious time. Meanwhile, the condition of Francis' father was getting worse every day, and expensive medicines required more and more money, which the poor driver simply did not have. Desperately, he asked for a loan from Jonathan Davis. Unfortunately, Francis was immediately rejected. The owner motivated it by the fact that they spent too much on the wedding. Francis had nothing more to hope for. So the guy took out a bank loan at huge interest rates. Since the salary that Jonathan paid him was not enough to repay the loan, Francis had to quit and find another job. Unfortunately, while Francis was looking for money for treatment, his father's condition deteriorated markedly. Ironically, the man died on the day his son took out the loan. The guy was crying, clutching money in his hands, which could no longer help his closest and dearest person. The funeral and grief from a loss of a loved one overshadowed the life of Francis for many months, who believed that everyone had betrayed him. Time passed making adjustments to human destinies and filling them with unpredictable events. Diana, having decided that she had already achieved everything in her life that one could only dream of, decided to give birth to a child. But no matter how much she tried, nothing came out. The doctors at the clinic immediately offered to conduct an examination. Diana postponed going to the hospital for a long time. But when she finally decided, the tests revealed a shocking diagnosis for her. Infertility. It sounded like a sentence, and the unhappy girl, closing her eyes with her hands, began to cry quietly. Jonathan, having learned about his wife's diagnosis among the first, changed dramatically. The man began to love himself what he could not even think about before. One evening when Jonathan brought two young beauties to the house, the girl decided to found out relationship once and for all. What are you doing? I'm your wife! And you have obligations to me. You only think I do. You should have read the marriage contract before signing it. You just as poor beggar as you were before the wedding. Jonathan replied with a sense of dignity. Maybe you got rich and successful, but in bed you're a complete loser. Diana sat through her teeth, which caused an outburst of wild anger from Jonathan. In the heat of the moment, the husband grabbed her by the hand and threw her out into the street ordering the guard not to let the former mistress in close to the house. On the move, wiping away tears, Diana wandered to the bus stop. The bus driver showed her pity, but not taking money for the fare. Arriving in the center, Diana pawned the ring, given to her by her mother for coming of age, and rented the room in a cheap motel. The girl cried for days on end, living half-starved and without hope for any future. After all, she was left alone, and she even had nowhere to go. But at some point, she remembered Francis, and a belated feeling of remorse arose in her soul. After all, when Diana was doing well, she did nothing to help the poor driver, who was looking for her support. Unable to leave with a feel of guilt, the girl wandered to Francis' house, intending to repent and ask him for forgiveness. Suddenly, when she was a few yards away from house she knew, Diana saw Francis coming down the steps with young girl. Married, of course he's married, Diana thought, feeling her cheeks flushed with shame. Turning abruptly, she walked away, hoping in her heart that Francis did not see her. Diana wandered around the city for a long time, until finally she found herself in a city park, sitting down on a bench she covered her face with her hands and sobbed. At the moment, unexpectedly, a call rang on her smartphone, lying in her jacket pocket. Despite the fact that the caller's number was not familiar to Diana, she still picked up the phone. Hello. What were you doing near my house? Francis asked casually. 
At first, Diana decided that she had imagined it all, but then convinced that it was really Francis, she burst into loud tears, and through tears, told him everything. I'll come right now, the guy sat abruptly and hung up. Five minutes later, he was over in the park and hugging Diana, whom, despite everything, he continued to love. As it turned out, the girl Diana saw him with was his sister, who came from another city to sell the property, left after her father's death. The deal took place some half an hour ago, and now Francis had half an impressive amount of proceeds from the sale of the house in his hands. His sister received the other half, immediately taking a return ticket home. Diana and Francis were already returning home in an embrace. A romantic candlelit dinner was waiting for them at home, which became an excellent prelude for the development of their future family relationships. After the divorce from Jonathan, the young people played a modest wedding. After exchanging rings and sealing their union with a kiss, Francis and Diana vowed to be always there, for better or worse. Subsequently, taking a child from an orphanage, young people realized that they had made the right choice in life. Thanks to this, now there's love and mutual understanding in their family, which Diana and Francis have dreamed of for so long.